I didn't really feel like I earned it when I got a shout out in a 3 clicks video for literally just running around, so this time I decided maybe I'd actually make a video of my own on the topics at hand. So what do I do best? Well, apparently it's benchmarking potato PCs on Counter-Strike. So let's see how the minimum requirement machine tackles CSGO's three latest map editions. To run through the specs real quick, the processor is an Intel Core 2 Duo E6600 which is two cores at 2.4GHz. It would have cost you around $300 when it was released back in 2006, though now you can pick it up on eBay for a couple of quid. The graphics card is an Nvidia 9600 GT which retailed for around the $200 mark at its 2008 debut, but is now available for less than a tenner on CEX if you can find it in stock. RAM is a bit of a tougher issue, since the Windows requirement says 2GB, but on a modern Windows OS this is really just not enough, as it made the game take about 5 minutes to load and then freeze every few seconds during gameplay. Since RAM usage is so dependent on stuff like the operating system, background programs running and whatnot, I just decided to go with the Linux 4GB requirement, and hopefully avoid a comment section full of people telling me how I could free up a few megabytes, or worse, use Windows XP. Besides, it's not like DDR2 is expensive. So with that out of the way, onto my testing methodology. I hosted a match on my magical amazing main PC with bots in it, and then I joined that match on the computer that I'm testing. I played some rounds, getting frame rate numbers in each of the general areas of the map to see how they compared. Since it's minimum specs, I ran the game at 720p lowest settings with multi-core rendering on, but since it's a very CPU bottleneck system you could easily get away with higher settings or resolution without much performance impact. Anyway, first map, Austria. I've always loved snowy outdoor maps, but for the highest frame rates you'll probably actually want to stay indoors at the buildings around mid. While the overall average just about managed 60 frames per second, some rooms could actually manage more in the realm of 80, so the outside bits near the spawns probably pulled that value down. B fares worse at an average of just under 50, and the A side matches up with the overall of about 55 frames, which is in the awkward region of almost playable and fairly smooth, but just not nice enough for a game like CS. 1% minimums were around the 27 FPS mark, which isn't actually as bad as it sounds, but it's still not really ideal for competitive play. Sub-Zero continues the icy theme, but let's say the temperature isn't the only thing that plummeted a bit. Frame rates this time around were firmly in the mid 40s for average, and around 20 FPS for 1% minimums. All three main areas of the map performed fairly similarly, and it's too close to really call which areas perform best or worst. If you're planning on playing this map competitively with a computer like this, I'd probably want to overclock the CPU a bit. Biome slots in perfectly between the other two maps with an average of 51 and minimums of 24. Again, on the awkward cusp of playability and all the areas are fairly close together, though the average around A was slightly noticeably worse. I also took the liberty of benchmarking Mirage in the same fashion to show you how a much simpler map performs, which got a respectable 75 average and 31 minimum. It's by far the best performing of all the tested maps, but for the leap in visual quality that the new ones offer, the performance here isn't too bad, I guess. So, overall performance then. I don't have any way of getting footage from the game in a way that doesn't slow it down, but performance I would say is still acceptable for minimum hardware requirements. It doesn't help that there's no solid definition of what minimum specs for a game should actually be able to do. Some games will literally just list what you need to get them to open, and others will actually list what you need to have a decent time at a lower resolution. Counter-Strike is in a tricky position because it isn't too difficult a game to run at all, but the frame rate you need to be considered playable is much higher than your average game due to the competitive nature. If the comments of my previous videos is anything to go by, tons of you swear by having 300 FPS at all times, and if so, good for you, but obviously for minimum requirements we're not going to be looking at that kind of performance. So one last thing, I noticed it's sort of become standard for people to run the FPS benchmark map when benching CSGO with different hardware, even on channels like Linus Tech Tips. It's a cool map, and I respect that it's very hard to have a benchmarking scenario that repeatable in CSGO while still being representative of how it performs in actual gameplay, but I've never really agreed with using that as a meaningful test. When I ran it on this PC, I recorded an average frame rate of 40 with 1% minimums at just 11 frames per second, which is way worse than any of the maps performed in an actual match. This is probably a point worth expanding on some other time, but I just want to mention how different this result was to what's actually seen in gameplay, especially since this map's often considered the decider of whether a CPU or graphics card is suitable for esports gaming. But for this video, I'll leave that there. 
I don't usually bother with outros, but here are some links to the, my original test of this PC from last year, and to 3 Flicks Phillips videos testing the timings and contact points if you actually care about, you know, gameplay. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, or something. I don't know. I'm off. Bye.